Welcome to Bentley House Kits. This is the instructional video for the 112 scale filing cabinet. If you'd like more information on purchasing this kit, you can find a link in the description box below. To get started in your kit, you are going to have two mat board pieces. Each mat board piece will create one filing cabinet. You're also going to have a cardstock piece that has a lot of details. You're gonna have one cotton round that's gonna help you clean the pieces and one sheet of sandpaper. In this video, I'm only going to show the construction of one of the cabinets, but they both go together in the same manner. So you can construct them at the same time if you know you're going to be making both. I highly suggest starting with a new blade so you get nice clean cuts as you cut out the pieces. I'm starting to cut out the interior rectangles for piece A. Those can be discarded. Then I'm going to cut out piece A. As soon as it comes out, I'm going to use my cotton round to clean up the edges. All of the kits are pre-cleaned, however, once they're removed from the sheet, a little bit of extra ash may be on the very edge of the pieces. I'm starting with piece A, two pieces marked B, a piece marked C, and four pieces marked E. I'm gluing each of the E pieces just underneath the engraved lines that are marked on piece C. Make sure the engraved line that has the smallest gap is towards the bottom so your cabinet lines up. Four E pieces line up centered underneath the four engraved lines. Now I can add the pieces marked B on either side. They're going to be on the face of piece C lined up against the edge. Do this on both sides to create the walls of your filing cabinet. Once it's complete, it should look like this. Now we need to create the top and bottom of the cabinet and we're going to do this with both pieces marked D. They are the same size, so it won't matter which one is the top or which one is the bottom. Add glue to three edges of piece D and glue it inside of both pieces marked B and up against piece C so that it fits in the gap. Do this for both the top and the bottom of the cabinet so you have a completed rectangle. After these steps are completed, let the cabinet dry completely. Next we're going to add piece A onto the front of the cabinet. Anywhere piece A is going to touch the completed cabinet already, I am going to add glue. This includes on the edge of the pieces that are marked E. Make sure that the bottom of your cabinet lines up with the bottom of the back of your cabinet. You can tell you've done this correctly because the E pieces will line up just underneath each opening where the drawers are going to go into the cabinet. You may need to use a pair of tweezers or a toothpick to help the E pieces line up and allow them to dry with glue so that they stay in place. The E pieces are going to act as supports for the filing cabinet drawers. The next step is optional and not necessary if you plan to put a bunch of stuff on top of your filing cabinet, but if you would like the top to be very smooth and clean, you need to remove one of the two large rectangles from the cardstock sheet. It will be slightly oversized. Line it up with the edge, glue it on, and then cut off the excess. This is going to make a very smooth top for your filing cabinet. Again, if you plan to cover something on top of the filing cabinet or stack cabinets, you do not need to do this step. Here's the difference. The blue one has the cardstock on top and the tan one does not have the cardstock, so you can see some of the edges of the mat board. It looks a little bit nicer, but is not necessary for the structure of this filing cabinet. Now we're going to move on to making the drawers. You are going to have two working drawers and two non-functional drawers. But of course, because both sheets have the same pieces, you can mix and match your drawers. So if you would like one cabinet to have three functional drawers and the other one to have one, you can kind of play around with the numbers. However, if you're just making one cabinet, you have two functional and two non-functional. To begin the drawer construction, I'm going to cut out two pieces marked H and four pieces marked J. For a single drawer, you're going to glue both pieces marked J on top of piece H, lining them up against the edge. The slits can either be closer to the top of piece J or closer to the bottom. That is up to you. Do this for both drawers. Now I'm going to cut out two pieces marked G and four pieces marked I. The I pieces are made to go just behind the slits in piece J. 
if you would like the slits to stay open so that you can see what's inside the drawer while the drawer is pulled out, you do not have to add these pieces. However, if you do want them, there is one for each side of the drawer that you can glue on. Now we're going to add piece G to the back of the drawer. Glue piece G between the two J pieces and on top of piece H to fill in the gap. Allow this to dry completely. In this kit, I have included some files on the cardstock sheet. If you would like the files to fit into the drawer, you may have to cut down the pieces that are marked I so that they're a little bit thinner. To do this, you can cut a slit into the mat board and just remove one of the very thin pieces of paper on the top of the mat board so that the I pieces are thinner and you have more room for the files. Or you can just omit the I pieces as I stated before. Now we're going to remove all four F pieces, which are going to be the front of the drawers. Two of them are going to go on the drawer construction and two of them are going to be directly applied to the cabinet. If you would prefer a slightly curved edge to your drawer front, go ahead and sand it now before applying it to the drawer. To apply it, I'm going to add glue all around the front of my drawer and then center it onto my drawer front you will be able to see about a 16th inch all the way around the drawer to make sure that it is centered. Do this for both drawers. Allow them to dry 100% completely before doing the next step. Now I'm going to place in my working drawers on the areas where I want my drawers to be able to come out of the filing cabinet. The drawers will be a snug fit, but if you happen to have any issues with it getting them into the drawer slots, you can slightly sand the edges of the drawer openings. Once you're happy with their fit and location, you want to lay your filing cabinet flat on your work surface. This will allow you to line up your drawer fronts and make sure they are sitting correctly amongst the working drawers. Once you're happy with the layout, you can go ahead and glue on the fake drawer fronts and I highly suggest you remove the working drawers after gluing them on to make sure none of them accidentally get glued together. This is a good point in the project to go ahead and sand any sides that you have overlapping. Be very careful when sanding mat board, sand in the direction away from the paper so you don't rip any paper off of the face of the mat board. Now we're going to remove two long skinny rectangles from the cardstock detail sheet. These are going to wrap around the top and the bottom of the cabinet. I start by gluing it to the back of the cabinet and then slowly wrapping and adding glue as I go. This is going to create a nice finish to the top and the bottom of the filing cabinet. Here is how it should look once both are applied. This is a good point to go ahead and paint the base coat onto your filing cabinet. Go ahead and remove your working drawers so you don't accidentally paint them in place. I'm going to be using acrylic paint and make sure that I'm not adding any extra moisture. So for my first coat, I'm just using plain acrylic craft paint straight out of the bottle. You can add some thinner watered down coats of paint after the first coat is applied. I'm also going to be using some chalk pastels to give this a little bit more depth and a little bit more age. You may also want to use some kind of shiny top coat to give it that metallic look. Now I'm going to remove all the pieces marked handles from one section of my cardstock sheet. Remember, this is enough pieces for both cabinets, so I'm only going to be removing one set of handles. Each handle is going to be made with two sets of these very thin rectangles. I'm gluing one on top of the other to create a double thickness. In the end, I will end up with four double thick handles. You will notice that each handle has two engraved lines. These lines are going to help you bend the handles into a staple-like shape, which is going to be applied to the cabinet. Here you can see how the handle started and how it looks once it is glued together and bent. Before removing the nameplates out of the nameplate section, I am going to very carefully write some letters so that it looks like a filing cabinet that is organized alphabetically. You can also print off small pieces if you want something that is computer printed and then just cut them to the exact same shape. The frames I'm going to be painting a gray metal just like I'm going to be painting the handles. Once the frames are dry, I can glue them onto my smaller pieces to complete my nameplates. 
These are now ready to be glued onto the cabinet. Before gluing any of my details in place, I'm going to add my drawers back to my filing cabinet. This is going to help me make sure everything is lined up. I'm gluing the handle right in the center of the drawer. However, there are many different styles of filing cabinets and you can put your handle wherever you think it works best. After those are dry, I can go ahead and add my nameplates just to the top of the handle and centered within the drawer. This is going to let me know which drawer has which files inside. Here is the completed look of the cabinet. Both of the movable drawers are still able to be pulled out and then I could put in papers or I could just have them open and all sorts of things coming out of the cabinet. This kit kind of becomes a blank slate in which you can start to tell the story of what's going on in the room. The blue one, as you can see, is aged a little bit more. However, you can make a nice new bright and shiny cabinet as well. Whatever works for your project. And here again, you can see the difference in the tops. However, I'm going to be most likely covering my cabinets with stuff on top, so I don't really worry about that too much. I also included five little file shapes in your cardstock detail sheet. This was because I had extra space and I thought they would be fun to add. You can just fold them in half and then of course color them or paint them however you want them to look. You can flip them back and forth so that they do look like the tabs are on either side. They could look really cute just inside the front of your cabinet and of course if you need more you can use the cardstock as a stencil to cut some more for yourself. And here's how they look inside the drawer. Remember you will have to adjust the eye pieces on the inside if you want to make sure you have enough room to put them inside. And this is the completed kit. This is the filing cabinet by Bentley House Minis. If you are interested in purchasing this kit, make sure to look in the description box below for all the purchasing details. Thank you for watching. Bye.